Both panels are a great architectural feature. They're low maintenance, cost much less to install than real stone, and add instant style to any room or building. Here's some help in deciding how to go about buying faux panels. And all panels are not created equal. Here are the five most important things to look for. You need to work with a company you trust. So number one is trust. How do you go about getting comfortable with both the product and the company you're dealing with? It's always a good idea to see how long the company has been making panels. Some manufacturers are new to the industry and lack the many years of experience needed to make a long lasting panel. Look at the company's testimonial page on their website. See whether they have a lot of satisfied customers. These are the folks who have been in your shoes making the same decision. Most internet buyers trust these reviews more than any other source when making a buying decision, so it's a great place to look. Is there a photo gallery on their website with customer projects? A Facebook page with at least 20,000 likes. Check their Better Business Bureau rating. Ideally, they have an A or an A-plus rating. You want an experienced customer service team there to answer your questions, not a general service desk where all they can do is show you a catalog and leave you on your own to figure it all out. In the end, you want an established company will stand behind their product. Is the panel really made in America? Number two is the quality of the product. Remember, the quality of your finished product will be a direct reflection of the panel quality you start with. If people are gonna be up close to the panels, they need to look real. Most manufacturers mold theirs from actual stone, brick, and wood and you can see and feel that difference. Some manufacturers go a step further to employ trained artisans to then hand paint the panels. That difference also shows. You wanna to go to the panel that's at least one to two inches thick. When a panel is too thin, it can warp or shrink. A thicker panel is more stable and avoids these issues. The finish of the panel should be painted with a multi-step process. The more paint layers and colors that are applied, the more realistic and durable the panel will be. Many manufacturers only have a two-step finishing process, which fades and chips off more easily. Others use a three to four-step process that holds up over time. Another thing to investigate is the density of the panel. A higher density panel prevents warping and shrinking and will last longer. You can also check the real weight of the panel. A lighter panel usually is thinner and is using lower density foam. Number three would be the finished look or fit of the panels. Naturally, you expect your panels to interlock perfectly, but this is not always the case. Some panels require sanding and grinding to make them fit into each other. You also don't want to notice any gaps or seams. The goal should be that when you stand back and look at your completed project, you can't tell where one ends and the next begins. It's not natural to see repeats in the pattern from one panel to the next. Number four. When pricing out panels, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Some panels on the market are not the standard two feet by four feet. They're smaller, giving the illusion of being less expensive. However, the smaller the panel means the more panels you'll need. So it's important to check the price per square foot and the price per pound. Lastly, if buyer safety is a consideration, then having a class A rated panel is important to you. The supplier should be able to provide successful test results for the material they used. Was the material tested in accordance with the ASTM designation E84-15? Anything else is not official. We hope this video has answered some questions on how to make sure you're purchasing the best panel for you. If you have any others, please get in touch with us. Thank you.